بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الانسان علم البیان ریسپیکٹڈ کلیگ سننے والوں ویلکم سو ہمیشہ کی طرح آج کی شارٹ کیس شروع کرنے سے پہلے ایک اہم بات ریمبر ایلیمنیٹ دی ایکسیوزز ایوری ڈے بیکاز ایف یو فائنڈ این ایکسیوز یو ول ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو سکسیڈ سو ایلیمنیٹ آل دا ایکسیوزز گیٹ اپ اینڈ ڈو اٹ چونکہ آج کا دن بقرعید کا دن ہے تو میری طرف سے آپ لوگوں کو اور آپ کے سب گھر والوں کو عید مبارک آج جو شارٹ کیس میں آپ لوگوں سے شیئر کرنے جا رہا ہوں وہ ہے مایاستینیا گریوس اس میں بیسک پیتھ فیزیولوجی ہے کیسٹیکوین کو سیکریٹ ہونے سے اینٹی باڈی سٹاپ کر دیتی ہیں سو دا کمانڈ کین بی دا چائلڈ ہیز ٹو سیز پلیز از ایم این اور ڈو دا جی پی این ریلیونٹ سو ود آل دا کیسز یو ہیو ٹو اسٹارٹ ود انٹروڈکشن اینڈ کنسینٹ فالوڈ بائی ہینڈ سینیٹائزیشن اینڈ ایکسپوجر اٹ شوڈ بی اونلی شارٹس بٹ یو ہیو ٹو ٹیک کیئر آف دی موڈیسٹی اینڈ ایج آف دا چائلڈ اینڈ دا ویدر کنڈیشنس دین یو آر اسٹارٹ بائی آسکنگ دا نیم آف دا چائلڈ ٹو چیک فار دا اسپیچ دس آتھریا اینڈ دس فیزیا you handshake for the myotenia and see the mother and father facies for myopathic facies then in all short cases you have to look back sit stand back and see the general look whether the child is sick or well looking cyanosed or having respiratory distress at rest is there any pallor or jaundice what is the nutrition status of the child is there any diagnostic or dysmorphic features then you check the status of the child by checking the consciousness and cooperation during the examination then you check the facial nerve why this apologies for the destruction then you check the facial nerve for the maneuvers like frowning close eyes forcefully fill cheeks with air show teeth this is done to appreciate whether the facial nerve palsy is unilateral or bilateral whether the facial nerve palsy is upper face is speared or not if upper face is speared it is the upper motor neuron lesions if complete face is involved then it is a lower motor neuron lesion so these are the maneuvers of the facial nerve examination after then check the extraocular movements check for the third four the sixth key nerves are checked together you can make an edge and look for the both nerves in both eyes then they ask the patient to look up raise hands above the head while opening and closing hands repetitively then you check why this uh, maneuvers are done because in myasthenia gravis there is a fatigability and the fifth nerve is checked by checking the jaw opening ears for vesical for the eighth nerve the ninth and tenth you see ah and check the movement of the uvula for the twelfth nerve you ask the patient to protrude tongue then you check the upper and lower limbs and you should do the complete motor examination such as a bulk tone power reflexes in myasthenia the reflexes must can be diminished but rarely lost then you check the gait and proximal muscle wasting or weakness by making the child squat and go at the sitting gower sign if the patient is infant then you should do 180 degree examination for poor head control and hypotonia at the end of the examination you ask the examiner for permission to take blood pressure take height and weight and plot them on the centile charts but as if there is the command is a gp you must take height and weight pulse respiratory at the start so the description is a hypothetical one i have just examined 4 year old child who was conscious and cooperative during my examination he was well looking under nourish child without obvious respiratory distress and cyanosis at rest there are no diagnostic or dysmorphic features He has bilateral ptosis but no dysmorphism. Extraocular movements and pupillary reflexes are intact. He is unable to sustain upward gaze or elevate his arms above head for more than a minute and rapid fatigability of muscles on repetitive opening and closing of hands. Tone power reflexes are normal in both upper and lower limbs. All the accessible cranial nerves are normal and there is no myotonia. The breath sounds are bilaterally vesicular without any added sounds. then the investigations for myasthenia emg which will show the decremental response 
with the repetitive nerve stimulation the muscle potentials diminish rapidly in amplitude until the muscle becomes refractory to further stimulation anticoagulinesterase anti mrsk antibodies anti nuclear and thyroid function test chest x ray for thymoma tensilon test child should have a mirable weakness such as ptosis dysphagia and neck weakness in case of 2 years older child adrophonium chloride tensilon initially test dose of 0.01 mg per kg to see patient is not allergic to the drug then give 0.01 mg to 0.02 mg administered every 30 to 40 seconds as long as the maximum dose is exceeded the maximum dose is 0.1 mg per kg in less than 30 kg and 0.2 mg per kg in get patient greater than 30 kg effect should be seen in less in 10 seconds and disappears within 120 seconds atropine 0.01 mg per kg should be available in case of any untoward uh, incident the effect is checked by distance between upper and lower eyelid in inability ability to swallow a sip of water when less than 2 years adrophonium is not recommended so you can give prostigmine or neostigmine intramuscular 0.04 mg per kg if no adverse reaction after 4 hours give 0.04 mg per kg intramuscular peak effect is seen in 20 to 40 minutes a muscle biopsy to check for the lymphorrhages the treatment is cholinesterase inhibiting drugs are a drug of choice you give neostigmine 0.04 mg per kg m i m every 4 to 6 hours 0.4 mg per kg every 4 to 6 hours orally to improve dysphagia give oral dose 30 minutes before meal pyridostigmine is four times increased dose required 4 to 5 mg per kg per day in 4 to 6 divided doses in familial myasthenia due to absence of end plate acetylcholinesterase choline esterase inhibitors are not effective give ephedrine 3 mg per kg per day i divided into 3 divided doses di amino pyridine 1 mg per kg per day in 4 divided doses both of which release acetylcholine from the terminal axons other options therapeutic options which are can be are available such as cymectomy plasma pheresis ivig steroids and rituximab so some few words about the myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is an immune mediated phenomena there are antibodies which are formed against acetylcholine and plates and the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft is normal but the post synaptic motor end plate is less responsible and less responsive because of binding of antibodies so the acetylcholine cannot bind to it so the types of juvenile myasthenia gravis it is an immune mediated neuromuscular blockage familial in which there is absence of end plate cholinesterase and the congenital the transient neonatal myasthenia gravis due to maternal antibodies in the most common cases muscle weakness is caused by circulating antibodies that block acetylcholine receptors at the post synaptic neuromuscular junction which inhibits the excitatory effects of neurotransmitter acetylcholine on nicotinic receptors at neuromuscular junction no cardiac or sensory system involvement is there so i thank you very much for your listening and remember this is just a guideline for you and uh, you can learn it and you can make your own schemes but this is just uh, to show you what i have done and how i have prepared so best wishes for you i wish and i pray that may allah be your helper protector and guide Allah Hafiz